The historic mine waste from the Vetwatersrand still contains over 6 billion tons of gold content. That's according to Dr. Steve Chingwaru, whose groundbreaking research has sparked interest from mining companies around the globe. Dr. Chingwaru joins us now to tell us more about his research. First of all, uh, congratulations, uh, Dr. Chingwaru. And summarize for us what your groundbreaking research that has garnered so much interest from miners, mining companies around the globe um, is about. Hello, uh, thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure being here. So, yes, uh, just a brief summary on what sort of my research is about. Um, as you said, I discovered over 400 tons of gold that is still locked within this mine waste. Um, this mine waste is from over a century of mining the Witzwatersrand um, gold deposits uh, within the Witzwatersrand mining area. And yeah, this has been sitting for over a century, but they are remining operations that are actually going on now. But um, these mining operations sort of use a traditional extraction method or a traditional way to get the gold out. Um, this is using cyanide, but they get approximately 30% um, of the gold from these tailings or mine waste. Um, so the goal of my research was to sort of discover where the remaining 70% of this gold is sitting. So we did some test work. We got material from uh, uh, several tailing stumps across the Viswatersrand area, which include uh, the Evander tailing stumps, the Central Rand tailing stumps, uh, the Clackstock tailing stumps, as well as Carlton Vulp. And then we characterized these tailings and we discovered that there is a substantial amount of gold that is still just sitting in there in, in these tailing stumps in the mine waste but it is classified as invisible gold. And what this means is that the gold is locked within a mineral. So the reason why it's not being processed by the, the traditional means is because it's locked within a, another mineral. So you need to have a certain step before you, you process these traditionally. So there's over 420 tons that is just spread across each of these um, tailing stumps and yeah that's just a brief summary of my research and my discoveries uh, all this time was this not uh, known i mean to uh, uh, i mean mining companies that have been operating in the in the area as was just mentioned um i'm i'm really not sure if they knew or whether it's maybe not a feasible way to mine them, but um, in the literature, this is uh, severely lacking. Um, so we brought that to light. Some of the mining companies have actually contacted me, so it seems like a substantial amount of them didn't know that they had this gold that was sitting within uh, the mineral pyrite. Uh, they call it fool's gold. Um, so... <laughs> I think um, now that we've brought it to light, a lot of them have been sort of realized that there is this goal that is still locked within the pirate. Any chance uh, Zama Zamas would have uh, uh, already discovered this? No. Um, so the tailings are extremely fine. Um, so what the tailings are, are it's low grade and but high tonnage. So in order to get a profit from this, you need to process a substantial amount. Um, so the Zamazamas, they can try, but you will not get a substantial amount of gold if you are just one individual person. You need heavy machinery, you need the equipment, and you need a, 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 that step I talked about to extract this gold sufficiently. Now, at face value, or from what you know, um, would big mining uh, companies have an interest um, in this, given their reputation um, for even, I mean, for not for not wanting to 
uh, um, I mean, invest in projects that don't ha that don't yield uh, big big profits. Isn't that the reason uh, we have Zama Zamas? Precisely because they believe that it's going to be too much too expensive um, to, for example, make sure that I mean the mine is mined to the very last ounce of whatever. Um, so. I've, I've been contacted by a few of these companies um, that have shown interest. I strongly believe that there is profitability in mining these tailings dumps um, because, one, they are on surface, whereas in the gold that is underground needs to come up. That's an expensive um, methodology that needs to be used, whereas in these are on surface and they've already been crushed and milled, they are fine. So the crushing and milling is sort of the most expensive part of a processing uh, flow sheet. So you've already skipped that part. All you need is uh, that step I talk about, the pretreatment, in which you just uh, activate, put this additional step, and then do what they were continuing to do by that traditional cyanidation um, process. So I really do they think that there is profitability, especially now with... Um, the Witzvater's Rand um, reaching its maturity, the underground mines are closing down. Um, it's becoming way too much, it's becoming way too expensive to mine the primary ores that are underground. Whereas in this, this on surface um, uh, material that is just sitting there, and yeah, we can, I think there's profitability in that. Do you see yourself uh, personally getting involved in one way or the other? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I do. I'm, I'm very much a strong believer of sustainable mining. Um, these tailing stumps have uranium inside them. They have cobalt. They have copper, and a lot of these tailing stumps are very close to um, uh, urban settlements, and they've been blowing into people's houses. They've been blowing into rivers. And also they cause acid mine drainage. So I'm very much a strong advocate to mine these tailing stumps properly. And um, if companies want to get involved with me, they can always contact me and um, get, get my advice in, in to sort of plan where they're going to mine or how to mine these, how to extract these uh, sustainably and environmentally friendly. So, yeah, I do believe I'll be involved. Mining companies, as you said, have already contacted you. And the government? Oh, yes. I've been invited. I was invited by the Obertsman uh, of Johannesburg and the Public Protector's Office. Um, we were having a meeting to discuss sort of the um, Zama Zama issues in the Riverly area um, in Soweto. And they came across sort of my articles um, and they invited me to present um, my findings and what I would suggest would happen. So these t um, d d diverted away from the Zamasamas, but it's sort of for the benefit of the communities in that area. Um, so it has a substantial amount of tailing stumps, and this is causing a lot of health problems. Um, so I suggest sustainably mining them, and um, having sort of a remediation program that would uh, benefit um, the surrounding areas. So, yes, I have been in contact with government. Um, uh, I spoke to people from City of Johannesburg, um, the people from the Public Protector, um, and provincial government as well. Well, I mean, the Public Protector and the Ombuds, of course, play uh, a different role. I mean, policy still rests with the Department of Mineral Resources. Anything from them? Yeah. No, I haven't been contacted by them. Okay. That's uh, actually very uh, uh, um, um, interesting. Does the fact that you are a grandson of a legendary prospector, George Nolan, have anything to do with what you've been doing? In other words, this runs in the blood. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, for a long time, I didn't realize that um, he was uh, uh, such a famous prospector and discovered the, one of the largest lithium deposits 
in Africa, but uh, in 2015, uh, luckily I was able to sort of visit um, the area where this deposit is based. It's in Mashingo in Zimbabwe. Um, and sort of I went on this journey of self-discovery and I realized, oh, I think I also have a passion for mining, so m might as well get into mining. So that also played a part in, uh, in my uh, academic and career trajectory. Dr. Chungwaru, thank you so much uh, for, for, for your time and all the best. He is, of course, a researcher uh, who recently obtained his uh, PhD and uh, mining companies, as you heard him, uh, have shown an interest in what he has been able to dig. Um, well, We'll see whether there's an interest in our, from our government uh, where, of course, policy rests.